All right, Pete Thompson, host of the Pete Thompson Show, although not this weekend. He's got the Saturday off, and he joins us now on the Boardwalk on the Hotline for Tuesday with Thompson. Peter? Not this weekend, Hare. Not this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> that was good. That was good. Gonna, Boom. Yeah, thank you. Got a little time off. A Got couple a things off. here, Pete Thompson. Uh, number one, you pulled yeah. off a great referee costume at the Witchcraft the other day. It was the hit of the party. <laughs> thank you. Thank I thought you. the hat made it. Oh, the hat was crucial. I thought the best thing that I did with that referee costume was uh, at one point somebody was trying to show me a Cowboys glove, and people forgot that I had a whistle hanging around my neck. So yeah, I this was epic. put that sucker in my mouth, blew that whistle, <laughs> heads turned. I started calling the guy out by name, said, we got a Cowboys fan here. You know, people are laughing, big group, everybody's laughing, everything's good. So I get done that, somebody graciously picks up the flag for me because, you know, Stuff below my shins is always a challenge. And uh, they pick up the flag for me. And and, and literally somebody says to me, like, they they were reaching for their phone and said, that was great. Can you do it again? (laughs) Oh, my gosh. (laughs) Well, yeah. you. uh, So for the people out there, Pete Thompson was a referee with a uh, referee outfit that might have been a little young. A little young on you. (laughs) Luckily, he had. Uh, uh, So we we remedied that. Yeah. And uh, got that all fixed, and uh, I Thank was God. the flag. I was the penalty flag. So PT for a while. Yeah, well, see what had happened was <laughs> the parka must have gotten hot. The poncho, you must have been warm in a poncho or something, because the next thing you knew, like the rest of us were still in costume, and you were just, you know, the Halloween costume known as Mike Gill. Well, I realized that. Uh, see, it was a great. I loved the event. It was great. And there was probably, let's say, let's just say, estimate about 2,000 people there, okay? If not more. Yeah. But I'm yeah. just going to throw out an, a round odd number of, of, of 2,000. About 1,000 of them were dressed, and 1,000 of them were not dressed. So I figured, Correct. well, hell, if half the people here aren't dressed, I'm not going to walk around looking like a penalty flag all night. Yeah. So I probably got out of the penalty move. flag costume and allowed you guys to walk around dressed in, uh, well, Ryan was the same thing you were, essentially. And mm-hmm. then Jeff Moser. Yeah, his costume fit a little better, though. I mean, he, yeah, he, he pulled like, it off a little. Although yeah. you looked more like a modern day official. <laughs> he did. <laughs> Thank you. I have Missing some miles calls, on the left and right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there was a great time. And uh, see, are you glad we asked you to come now? Absolutely. And you can already book me for next year. Wow. I mean, uh, it was that know. good that you're back again. It was I mean, a great come event. On. You know, it was just a mix of craft beers and, you know, vodkas and, you know, good food. And they had some fire stuff down on the beach. And, you know, I mean, all the, all the fun contests, too. You know, there's there's somebody I work with here. I'm, by the way, I'm still at school. It's uh, information night in case you're – I got your kids out there and you're looking for what to send them to. Uh, 5080 Atlantic Avenue, Mays Landing, by the way. Yeah. That's uh, the location. You know, just come on, swing on by. Uh, so there's a teacher here at school. Her husband made Oh, this made props. my night. So that this karaoke prop, you know, like where they stick your head through and it was like zombie karaoke and stuff. It was great. Yeah. No, the, the point that made my, my night was Pete Thompson oh, yeah. was Here standing <laughs> there. And, you know, <laughs> by the go. way, Pete Thompson once again was, was the coming. hit of the party. You know, everybody, everybody walking up to the 97.3 tent. PT here? Where's the PT? Is Pete Thompson here? I said, the guy doesn't even really work with us anymore. He's only on one no. day a week now. Reduced right? role, yeah. Yes. I mean, so it's not like, like he's on every single day, but Pete Thompson. Anybody see his PT here? Get PT here. PT here. <laughs> so one girl comes up to Pete, and she says, hi, Pete. And Pete says, hello. Should I know you? She says, we work together. <laughs> yeah, that's Robin Hagen. She teaches here, and uh, I felt a little embarrassed that I didn't know who she was. And, oh, I loved it. Uh, hey, I, were, I wasn't surprised yeah, I the did, least I knew bit. you got a big kick you out You were committed to your role. Your you were committed to your role, PT. You were a rep. I mean, to be fair, we things. probably have, I don't know, what, 140, 150, maybe more teachers on staff and workers here. So, you know, we don't, I don't know everybody. Yeah. Well, I loved it. Yeah. It, was, uh, the, it was the moment of the night for me was uh, when you did not know a coworker. <laughs> And uh, that made me Oh, uh, yeah. And just watching me, blah, yes, you yep. enjoyed that the most. Oh, I loved it. <laughs> uh, so, Peter, when did you tap out of the Eagle game? I made it through halftime begrudgingly. Um, God, it was awful. And, uh, you know, somehow we had, uh, well, you know, like any modern household, uh, you run out of things sometimes and you got to make that late-night convenience store run to 
quick get something. And in our house, that was toilet paper. So that's kind of how the Eagles were playing, bleep, right? Yeah. So we literally had to go to CVS to get bleep paper. And uh, while we were on the road there, they, the third quarter had started, and they started to move the football. So I thought, you know what? This is worth staying awake a little bit longer. So I tapped out when Carson went through, what was that, a late third quarter interception, his first that first yeah. interception? Or yeah, the old, late, yeah, late in the third, it. yeah. That was enough. I'd seen enough at that point. The, the comeback was not going to happen, and you know I was a glutton for punishment if I was trying to watch any more of it. I just couldn't take it anymore. So you obviously didn't watch this live, but did you record the post game? Did you watch any of the the post game interviews online or on your telly? Because I thought a lot of well, that was was telling. No, I didn't watch any of the post game. I read the comments because I get them in my email, you know, and you okay. can't always tell the same stuff from the transcript. But I did recognize very early by the time I'd woken up the next morning that. You know, we had a potential Ricky Waters for what, for who moment with Nelson Aguilar, and that that story continues to just keep going on. In fact, uh, now he says, all right, I missed it, but nobody cares. Like, I tried, but, you know, dude, you didn't try. That's why we're mad at you. Dive. That's just really just a bigger microcosm of, I think, what's going on with this team right now. Like, for me, I don't think, you know, we're talking about players that the Eagles can acquire through trade and, you know, Emmanuel Sanders gets traded today to the 49ers and it's not a one player solution. And I'm, I'm not saying the people that want a trade to happen are saying it is a one player solution, but I think there's things with this team PT that can't be fixed in a film session is my point. Do you, do you feel that way? No, not unless the film session, they roll in like a fake cake and Frank Reich pops out of it. I mean, that's, <laughs> That's a big narrative, you know, like uh, that uh, the people are now realizing, you know, uh, right after the Super Bowl when Reich leaves and, and he's not, you know, or once Reich left, you kind of think, oh, well, maybe. But but now you've had enough of a time and the Colts are having success without Andrew Luck with Jacoby Brissett. You start thinking, hey, this Reich guy might have really been the glue. You know, somebody said to me last night, I was at the Flyers game, but somebody at the Flyers game in between periods said, if Frank Reich was there, there is no way that Doug Peterson goes for that fake field goal when he went for the fake field goal the other day. No way he does that in Minnesota because Reich was the yin to his yang. Like, hey, I'm thinking of no, don't do it. You know, like he doesn't have anybody to balance him out now. A lot of people have made that assertion that uh, there's a lot of things that happen and Reich would kind of be like, are you sure you want to do this? Or, yeah, I would do something like that. I don't know. Uh, it seems that Reich is – been become a very successful head coach and that it's an easy connection to make that look we all like to have somebody who's our right hand man like I I don't doubt what you're saying at all Pete that there's somebody on game day that's kind of in your ear saying hey I wouldn't do that Uh, are you sure you want to do that like I don't know that he has that guy who has a high enough level of authority that feels comfortable enough to get in his ear on game day. And he's almost all right. by doing it all by himself now, where as there's plenty of times you're coaching a game and you want to make a call and you ask the guy next to you, Hey, I'm thinking about stealing a base right now. What do you think? You know, like we have signs that go from third base over to the dugout. Like I'm thinking about stealing. What do you think? Nah, I wouldn't do it here. Like, you know, like there are things that happen in the middle of a game that maybe aren't happening right now because he doesn't have someone that he ultimately trusts. Very much so. And it's just interesting to watch where Doug goes, you know, he alternates between like going into the Dallas game. He was like almost joking and like kind of, you know, lighthearted. And then he comes, obviously comes out of it. And there's been the times where he's gotten testy. Remember he barked at Les Bowen and said, what are you saying? I didn't get my team ready. Well, no, nobody, no, you know, he, he's not trying to bark back down because, quite frankly, his team was not ready to play in Dallas. That's why they were coughing up the football. So, obviously, Doug Peterson's going to be under the microscope here until hopefully the ship gets right it, although it might not. Another guy that's going to be under the microscope, Carson Wentz, and we've talked about him at great lengths, especially since that loss on Sunday night. How do you feel about Carson, PT, as a leader of men in that locker room? Well, that's the point, and that's the key point there is that I think always and forever, ever since Nick Foles did what Nick Foles did, there are people that will always say, 
Nick was a true leader. Nick was a rallier. Nick was a guy that brought the team together, that brought unity, and that's the one piece that Carson doesn't have. You know, he may have the physical tools. He may have gone on his lean diet and lost all his weight, and he's, you know, moving like the Carson Wentz, and actually he's sliding now. You know, a couple of years ago, we never thought you'd see Carson Wentz be smart and slide. The other night, you know, he, he, he broke off a little run, and, and gave himself up, and because he did, there wasn't a fumble there because he gave himself up. The runner, quarterback, giving himself up. I mean, that's that's Carson Wentz playing smart. You can't yell at the guy for that, but if you start to see these little leaks and cracks, you know, Lane Johnson, I think, was frustrated and popped off a little bit and probably wishes he didn't, and then just this revolving door of these guys that, you know, how are they talented enough to play 50 to 70% of the snaps one week, and then they decide, no, you're not the answer. I mean, uh, I don't I don't get that at all. So uh, I just think that the team is right on that. They're, well, you know, what, they're what, be teeter-totter. What person are you, like, te- what person are you referencing in, in that aspect? Because there are certain times where well, certain guys' skill sets fit better against one team or matchup than another. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm not saying that Orlando Skandrick is a is a world pro or something like that, but you know, look, I thought the linebacker he popped off his mouth and they got rid of him, but the guy can play, and I think he was better than a rookie linebacker. But I get it. Like, if you're going to send a message, you send a message. I don't understand what message they're sending by sending actual NFL players out the door to try and bring in. Well, it's a de- I mean, that's the thing. They're playing the numbers game. They got this Anthony Rush back in simply because they know that Hassan Ridgeway might not be able to go. But what message does that send to your team in your locker room if it's basically saying, all right, just remember, you think you're on this team now, but I mean, I guess it's a motivational thing, but uh, I think it shows instability. Uh, Tuesday with Thompson. Pete Thompson's with us here. So uh, obviously last week was a lot, odd week. You had anonymous quotes coming out. You had all sorts of that. You had the, uh, the Aguilar play. You've got basically – a maybe one of the ugliest losses in the Peterson era. He said it's one or two. So does Pete Thompson have confidence that this team can rebound, or is this season going to be a rocky one? I'm not ready to go for, like, uh, you know, the sky is falling yet. I'm not ready to be chicken little. I know this because I've worked alongside Mike Gill for a long time. It is a week to week league, and just when you're ready to count a team out, they go out to the Green Bay on a Thursday night where nobody's giving them a chance and they win. Just when you're ready to count a team out, even in the GD Chip Kelly era, they go up to Foxborough and to nobody believes win, right? So it is a week to week league. You know, now if they go to Buffalo and get waxed, Oh yeah, I'm gonna run around the parking lot going, This guy is falling, this guy is falling, <laughs> but uh, I'm not ready to count him out just yet. So the game against Buffalo is essentially a must win for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would agree. Very much so. All right, uh, Pete Thompson. By the way, Flyers are the bounce back win last night. So you and I were driving to the Witchcraft and we said, eh, the Flyers, they don't look so good all of a sudden again. So did last night make you feel better now that they're back home? And look, they had that trip to uh where'd they go? Um Prague they, and Prague. then Western Canada. And then they were in Western yeah. Canada. I mean, that was a brutal way to start the season. So do you attribute the the, the, the up and down start to that? So which team do you see? The one that looked pretty good for a couple of games, the one that looked pretty bad? They looked good last night. They did look good last night. They jumped out to a quick start. That had a lot. The second period was the difference. Look, the best player on the ice from the Flyers was Brian Elliott. So that's a little bit of a surprise to me. I didn't I didn't see that, you know, Brian Elliott was going to be the sharper goalie of the two, you know. Carter Hart, believe it or not, has given up some soft goals so far in the in the games that he's played and it was Brian Elliott's turn. It wasn't like they bench Hart to play Elliott or anything like that, but you know, they sent down um Twarinski to bring up Vorobriev and Farabee, and then Farabee made his debut last night. That's a message from Elaine Vigneault, like, dude, guys, we've lost four in a row. I can't demote Voracek to any more lines. He's already as far down as he goes. So I'll send these kids down and bring some guys up, and maybe that'll light a spark. And it did. I mean, they looked good last night. Um, But, you know, I looked at the standings the other day before the Dallas game, uh, on Saturday, Mike, before you and I went to that witchcraft, I looked at the standings and I thought, boy, Dallas is even worse than the Flyers. But you looked at the Metropolitan Division, and thank God for the Rangers and thank God for the Devils, because that's it. 
I mean, other than the Rangers and the Devils, everybody the Flyers are looking at, and I know it's only six to eight games, and I know some other teams have played more games, but I think that's the way it's going to be all year. I, I think this Flyers team maybe makes the playoffs, but right on the edge. I mean, there's mm. there, there, I like to feel like I feel good about this team. All right, uh, so last night I was watching Shark Tank, and I thought of you. Oh, Shark Teeth or Shark Tank? Shark Tank. <laughs> Shark Tank, which was on Sunday night. I watched it last night, though. All right? It was a new okay. episode. So uh, they had Kevin O'Leary invested in a uh, business called Plop Star, and it is essentially a competitor to uh, Poo-Pourri. <laughs> and it's like a <laughs> – it is like a uh, odor-eliminating toilet tablet. So you basically, it's like one of those things, you just drop it into the toilet, and then it basically forms an oily film that goes on top of the water. So anything that goes under the film, if you catch my drift, Mm. the odor can't get through the oil, and therefore... Oh. Wow. There you go. That's that's some science. Are you investing in Plopstar? Uh, I know there's probably some people in this building that wish that you did. I like... I don't like the name nearly as much as I like poo-pourri. In fact, when you said that, and I remember they used to have a little thing on the bottle that said, you know, if you sprinkle before you dinkle or yeah. whatever, you know, it had like a whole rhyme. But you go to the poo-pourri website, and under the different pull-down tabs, it literally says, it's only natural. We give a crap. <laughs> the story of poo. Well, the problem, I mean, The problem I have with the poo-pourri is, you spray the poopery, and then everybody knows that you sprayed that. So you didn't really hide the fact of what you did. You might as well just no, blow them out. You're hiding the smell, though. That's all everyone cares about. Well, you're. I mean, at that point, you just don't want to kill anyone with your stench. No, at that point, you're, you're, you're giving yeah. up that. Hey, I, I yeah. you know, like, when, when you're a first team <laughs> plop star, you got to do whatever it takes. So PT. <laughs> I got to tell you, this is on your radio right now. <laughs> well, I literally said this is a perfect, this is a perfect uh, product for Pete Thompson. You can get it on Amazon, eBay. I mean, it's a you, you know. Well, now you know what to get me for the Pollyanna for the company Pollyanna. Oh, right? believe it's me, be twenty it's bucks or less. The Plop Star bathroom deodorizer. So my question is, does the Plop Star itself have an odor, or does it just block the odor? Because that's the problem with the poopery is the poopery. It's evident what you did. You're not fooling anybody. Sure, but I think even if you, you know, even if you just use some random air freshener product, which the PP has in the past, you spray enough of that, and somebody's going to know anyway. I mean, so I, I don't understand why you're trying to hide the act. You're like Ryan said, right. just trying to be considerate. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Peter. Maybe next year you All can right, be a Michael. plop stop for uh, Halloween. Although oh, Halloween doesn't even happen yet. We got more Halloween parties still to come. I'm going to get a, another X added to my referee shirt. I got a connection. Guy I work with is going to take care of me. All right. It's Tuesday with Thompson. Thank you, Peter. Thanks, guys. By the way, Sixers opener tomorrow night, Pete Thompson. Yeah. yeah. I'll try to stay awake. <laughs> All right. Uh, by the way, you can listen to the Sixers and Celtics right here on 97.3 ESPN.